America's online Irish station, Radio Irish, that's what you're listening to. Sean McCarthy here, sitting up on New York City's High Line today with County Tyrone writer, producer, director Colin Broderick. How are you, Colin? I'm good. Nice to be here. Well, it's great to be here with you, Colin. Welcome to Radio Irish. Now, your new film project is Emerald City, which you describe as a dramatic movie about a hard-living crew of Irish construction workers in New York City who have reached the end of the line. You also describe it as the first movie to honor the Irish construction worker in America. Indeed, having worked in that industry yourself, Colin, you are writing from experience here. I understand that the story is based loosely on your two published memoirs, namely Orangutan, which is your very own story of working on New York's construction sites for a 20-year period, and the book That's That, which is a self-penned account of growing up during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Flesh the gist of Emerald City out a bit for us, Colin. What sparked you initially to write the story? I th I've been thinking about this story, I think, since the day I arrived in New York and uh, first got in the construction van and headed down Lexington Avenue for my first day's work. It's Having, having always been a writer and thinking like a writer, I, I think in stories, so... The, the story of Emerald City of this movie has sort of been with me since since the first day I got off the plane 27 years ago. Um, and obviously, now that I've published two books, uh, I, I feel like I'm ready to tackle the movie. I, because even even the books that I wrote, like especially Orangutan, it's a very cinema. If you read the book, it's very cinematic, and it it's it's hard to read the book and not picture what that lifestyle was like. And obviously, it's the, the Emerald City is not Orangutan. It's not that's that. It's more uh, to do with. Uh, I feel now it's a good time to make this movie because it's sort of. Uh, it marks the end of an era in Irish construction work and the movie itself, although loosely based on orangutan and that lifestyle, is follows more uh, a crew of construction workers as they sort of reach the end of the line and this lifestyle that sort of uh, has... Uh, there's a lot of consequences to living a lifestyle of hard partying and working like that for a long time and, and I feel these guys are finally come to the point where it's time to uh, pay the piper. Now you write also that the film centers around, as you say, a hard-working, hard-living crew of Irish construction workers here in New York City. Uh, men in their late 30s, early 40s who've left Ireland uh, in an era of closeted oppression and sectarian violence who have spent their adult lives self-medicating against a past that continues to haunt them. This sounds like the 80s to me, Colin, when young Irish men and women emigrated in their droves to places like, you know, Woodside in Queens to work on off-the-books construction sites, uh, removing asbestos from dilapidated old buildings and spending most of their wages outside rent and board drinking in the Irish pubs that cashed their cheques. Are these the characters of your story? Absolutely. I think you really nailed it there, Sean. That is exactly... Those are the men that I'm talking about. Uh, guys like myself who came over in the mid to late 80s, there was a huge boom of Irish construction workers to arrive in New York City at that time. An enormous boom of construction work, as you say, uh, most of them living in Queens, in Woodside, Sunnyside, in Woodlawn, in the Bronx, Riverdale, and a lot of those guys were, that was like the last huge wave of construction workers to leave Ireland because really what happened in the 90s then, the Celtic Tiger arrived, Ireland became the boom town and you had young, the young Irish workers were not growing up to follow their father's footsteps into the construction industry. They were going off into the tech industry. They were staying at home because they could afford to stay at home in Ireland. Ireland was a better economy. So the sort of this 200 year line of construction workers that had been coming from uh, Ireland to build these cities in, in America, all of that sort of ended abruptly 
late 80s, early 90s, and the crew of guys that I follow in the movie I find themselves now, uh, today, they're in their late 30s, early 40s, and there's a new boom of construction labor coming from South America. And these guys are younger, faster, better at what they do, and they are willing to work for less money, they're more eager, and you have this crew of Irish construction workers who are really asking themselves where do they belong and, and what, what do they do next and how do they, how do they make the transition if they want to get out of this lifestyle. Now, interestingly, you also write, Colin, that the men of Emerald City are hard-working, hard-parting, likeable rogues who are faced with the wreckage of a life spent dodging adult responsibility. Those three words Colin, dodging adult responsibility stopped me in my tracks as I read your Kickstarter synopsis, uh, because that really does sum up the score here, doesn't it? What do you think about these uh, young men uh, dodging their adult responsibility? Do you think it was a case of possibly, in some cases, latent alcoholism that may have surfaced when these chaps had a bit of dosh to spend? And uh, do you think maybe that the structure, you know, the, the off-the-books jobs uh, themselves, the landlords who rented accommodation, the pubs that cashed the workers' checks, the very same pubs that served these men their drink, and in doing so, you know, filtered those hard-earned wages back into the family pockets of the people who own these pubs, which happened also to be people in the construction industry. This whole circle, do you think that this structure should hold some kind of responsibility for the eventual ruin of many of these young men? It would be nice to see the pub owners come out and, uh, and finance the movie, if, that <laughs> if that's what you're asking. Uh, well, having been one of those guys... Uh, I can definitely say that for me, waking up in my late 30s, early 40s with a drinking problem, realizing that I hadn't sort of evolved, I, I had sort of been living the same life as I had when I first left Ireland at the age of 18. I was still working construction, partying, working, you know, living week to week, check to check. And the guys that I worked with were doing pretty much the same thing. And obviously you have a lot of success stories. You have uh, Irish guys who done very well in construction who did break out of that cycle. Uh, so I'm not talking about everybody, but I'm talking about the working guy, the working man, the guy who, who didn't run his own business, uh, the small contractor. A lot of those guys were illegal immigrants. A lot of them worked off the books. A lot of them were afraid of leaving because they wouldn't maybe get back into the country again. And what happens then is that identity of being Irish from Ireland sort of gets severed because you can never really go home again. And what does it mean to be Irish and still living here 20 years later when the, the industry you work in has changed so dramatically that the small Irish contractor is getting phased out? And, and yes, a lot of struggling with depression, uh, alcoholism, addiction, uh, as I did. And that is definitely prevalent in, in that lifestyle. And yes, it's all a bit of fun, uh, but, but behind that fun, behind that facade, is always a darker story. And in Emerald City, I'm trying to get at that. I'm, I'm also portraying and honoring how amazing these guys are in and, and what they do and in their work. They're very talented craftsmen. Uh, but there's also a darker side to that whole lifestyle that I'm trying to get at. From Bantry Bay to Boston Harbor, this is RadioIrish.com. Everywhere, everywhere. You're right that as the movie Emerald City progresses, we see the cost of that lifestyle, Colin. Uh, they're no longer fresh-faced boys. Consequences must be faced. The story's central character, Collie, is a writer and a poet at heart, struggling with addiction, alcoholism and depression. He recognizes that a huge cultural shift has taken place back in Ireland, and a new era of openness and acceptance is emerging. He also recognizes that he and his crew are on a precipice, and he's trying desperately to find a way out of that lifestyle before it's too late. Are you basing the character of Collie on your own self, Colin? 
Um, absolutely, yeah. It's definitely Collie is definitely loosely based on myself, and I feel there there has to be in a uh, cinematic uh, portrayal of the lifestyle. You also have to build in uh, a narrative and a, and an arc that sort of works cinematically. And there is a character who is loosely based on myself, who wants to make a break from this lifestyle and has been trying to write. He's a poet, but he's also struggling with alcoholism and addiction and depression. But he's trying to make that break. And he sort of, his, his workmates also want to see him do it. There's a certain element of hope there that, that maybe he can get out. Maybe, maybe they, see, they see that hope in him and there is that sort of support there. The movie marks the end of an era in Irish construction work in New York City, which witnessed a 200 years old stream of skilled manual labor emigrating to the United States from Ireland. Nowadays, Ireland, of course, as you said earlier on, no longer exports manual labor to the USA like it once did. It might do to Australia these days, but not as near as much to America as it once did. You note that the financial boom in Ireland, known as the Celtic Tiger, severed that dependence on manual labor as a means of survival. A younger generation of Irish could now afford to employ foreigners to do the skilled work their fathers had done for centuries before. Who has replaced us, Colin? Uh, I would say definitely the South Americans, a lot of Polish also, uh, Eastern European, but mostly South Americans now. The young carpenters who are coming out of like Ecuador and Peru and uh, Guatemala, uh, but, but Ecuador specifically and Colombia, are, are, they're exactly what we were 25 years ago. They, they grow up with it in their blood, they're, they're here, they are willing to work, they're fresh-faced and they're eager and, and they're amazing workers. And they're going through the same as we did back then? A lot of them are struggling with the same issues, it'll be the same sort of cycle. A lot of them are struggling with uh, not being here legally, not having a green card and working in cash, working off the books and when you work cash off the books and you're getting checks cashed in bars, that cycle is very hard to avoid uh, the, the party the party side of the, the whole business is sort of comes hand in hand now here on the ground you note that many uh, of the fast living hard partying Irish construction workers of that era find themselves struggling to maintain a lifestyle that is no longer physically emotionally or financially sustainable you also note Colin that the identity of the Irish worker in New York finds itself at a historical crossroads, Emerald City portrays that cultural shift. Would you describe Emerald City as a story of hope, Colin, or more of a story of tragedy? I would say it is definitely a dramatic story. It has elements of comedy and tragedy and hope. It is also uh, a love story and it's, it's quite heartbreaking. And I think that there is an element of hope, obviously, uh, for these guys, but ultimately I want to sort of portray that the cycle continues and that it doesn't end. And just because I make this movie it won't end and, you know, these guys who are working in construction will, will leave the job and go start another job. And that's what they do because they don't know any other life. That's, that's it. Who do we have here in the Irish community, Colin, uh, taking care of the needs of these fellows that have been left behind in a way? Uh, the once thriving stream of job opportunities have dried up. Are there any resources established for them? Yeah, a lot of bars in uh, Queens, <laughs> in the Bronx. Uh, you, you have resources, obviously, but the guys that I'm talking about, like me, are not walking into these Irish centers and saying I need help. None of us are walking in anywhere and saying I need help until we're on our knees and uh, I, I think that that's just an old-school Irish sort of mentality that I that, that I brush up against in the uh, in the movie itself is that a lot of these guys are very caught in their ways and 
they don't really want to change. They're quite happy living this lifestyle, and as painful as it is, it's what they did and their fathers did and their and, and their uncles when they came over here, and, and that's what they'll do. And I'm just, I just want to sort of portray what that subculture looks like, feels like, and give it an honest portrayal before it's too late because the smaller Irish construction crews are dwindling out. This is a movie that won't get made again in an authentic way ever. This is it. This is the last opportunity for this to happen and uh, I, feel like, I feel like I can do a good job of it. Now for Emerald City, you already have the principal cast, uh, which will include retired middleweight professional boxer John Duddy, Rachel Broderick, who's also your wife, and Gráinne Duddy, who's also John's wife. Your cinematographer and producer is Eric Branco, who collaborated with you on the short film Smile. Eric Branco is winner of the 2013 Student Academy Award. His work has also screened at festivals worldwide, including Cannes, Sundance, Tribeca, Slamdance, and SXSW. Indeed, you have worked with Eric before as well as having experience directing John, Rachel and Gronya on stage in plays that you have written such as Spud Munchers and Father Who. It's a tightly knit team for Emerald City so far, Colin. Is that important to you, Colin, to put together a, a tightly knit team? Yeah, not only was it important for me to use people that I'm familiar with, but I wanted also to steer it away from using uh, big name actors for this production. This is a production where I could have gone another route and go gone Hollywood with it and had name actors in the roles of the construction workers. I always felt like that was going to be uh, wind up being a movie that wasn't authentic and true to the lifestyle. We also have Johnny McConnell who is an amazing theatre actor and done some movies as well. He was in The Departed uh, among other things. He was in The Weir on Broadway. Uh, we have John Keating who is one of the finest actors, uh, Irish actors, uh, working in town today, just wrapping up a show over at the Irish Rep. I think he's in another one coming up over there. Uh, done a lot of uh, theatre, a lot of movies uh, and TV. Uh, so it's not just, it's it, yes, it's John Duddy, Grania Duddy, who are absolutely amazing, by the way. And the beautiful thing about having worked with these people in the theatre before and watched them grow as actors is when I wrote the script, I was able to write their specific roles custom made for them, which really makes a huge difference to me as a writer to know the character and to be able to write them a role that is, uh, that is, that sort of challenges them but also stays close to who they are and, uh, and, and sort of use their strengths uh, for, for, to, to work as a... This is, a, this is obviously a crew we're talking about and most of these people have worked together and they work very well together. My own brother Brendan plays one of the characters. Another actor I've worked with, Connor McManus, is in the production. But all great actors and, uh, and I wrote every role uh, specifically for each character. 24 hours a day, RadioIrish.com When do you hope to start shooting the film, Colin? We actually are hoping to start shooting some of the scenes within the next month. Right after uh, this Kickstarter campaign that's running uh, it wraps up, we hope to start shooting some of the earlier scenes in the movie because we also we have this townhouse that's under construction that we're going to use as the backdrop in the movie for a job that's happening that these guys are working on. and. Uh, we can, we're going to shoot over a period of six months, but most of the shooting will happen probably in September, October, and around then. But, but we'll be shooting up until then. Now you have a Kickstarter uh, going on for Emerald City, which aims to raise the necessary funds for this independent film, which, as we all know, can be an expensive venture to shoot independently. How can people listening here to Radio Irish get involved in making this film happen, Colin? Yeah, there are two ways actually of getting involved. One is Google Emerald City. We have an Emerald City Facebook page. There's an Emerald City Kickstarter campaign. Uh, there, we are also 
looking for private investors. Uh, the movie will probably wind up somewhere in the region, costing somewhere in the region of 200,000 uh, to, to, to actually complete. We have a Kickstarter campaign for 25,000 at the moment, but that's more to build a social network, uh, to get people aware of the project, uh, but we're actually looking for serious investors outside of that and we're talking to some at the moment, but if anybody wants to get involved, we have a production company, we have a, a financial plan and if anybody wants to talk to me, absolutely reach out through uh, Facebook. Uh, will you be availing of any New York City film production incentives to produce your film, such as the recording studios, production office spaces, green screens, studios and spaces that are available, or any of the various grants available through the New York Foundation for the Arts? No. <laughs> no. Totally independent. Uh, Eric Branco and I are going to manage most of the stuff ourselves. Well, Colin, you have also co-written the screenplay for the epic feature movie The Rising uh, to star Colin Morgan and David O'Hara, among others. You are happily married to Rachel. You have a daughter, Erica, who is six. And you write that you are grateful to be finally writing and creating and enjoying your newfound life to the fullest. Do you see Emerald City, Colin, as your way to highlight the hell that you yourself have walked through and not unscathed either, so that the men who did not make it like you did are somehow honored? Absolutely. Uh, I guess my own story, I know what it's like to be at the, at the worst of it. Uh, I worked construction here for 20 years. Uh, I had very serious drinking problems, addiction problems, depression problems, wound up in jail a few times. My life was a mess and in 2008 I finally put down the bottle and uh, actually 2007 I put down the bottle and uh, have managed to stay clean ever since and my life has transformed completely and I feel partly that it's my duty to tell this story because if I don't do it it's quite possible it's just never going to happen because I lived this story, I know it and, and I have the, the means to do it and, and I feel like it's, it, these men need to be honoured and, and if it doesn't happen now it's not going to happen. How far do you want to see the Emerald City travel, Colin? I'll see you at the Oscars. Alright, there's a good answer. Well, I want to thank you, Colin, for joining me here today up on the High Line on Radio Irish. Thank you very much, Sean. Always a pleasure. And it was great chatting with Colin up on the High Line here in Chelsea in New York. Colin parked his car and we climbed the staircase there and uh, enjoyed an hour or so uh, sitting up there, enjoying the views and uh, the people and the flowers and the fauna up on the High Line in Chelsea. And you can visit Emerald City the Movie on Facebook. Just search for Emerald City the Movie. Radio Irish. Because there's a little bit of Ireland in all of us.